Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Is it possible to ice skate without ice? How is it that we can glide so effortlessly across some surfaces like ice with special skates and hardwood floors with socks, but for some reason we can't cross a carpet very well? Well, today we're gonna explain what's happening here and learn all about friction. The force that allows us to slide across a smooth floor or come to a screeching halt. We're gonna show you the surprising science behind how all of this works. And to start, we're gonna try and answer my first question. Is it possible to ice skate without ice? Rahi is working on a special build with cool skates. Let's check in and see what he learns. I was looking through all the bins in the maker space and I found something called UHMW tape. It's specifically designed to reduce friction between a lot of different surfaces. Check this out. I wrapped some of the tape on a block of wood. Okay, time to make some skates. I thrifted some shoes from a thrift store and I'm gonna take a block of wood and then build the skates onto the block of wood. They feel kind of smooth right now without even getting up, but I'm kind of nervous for some reason. All right, let's try this thing for real now. All right. I feel tired and sweaty, <laughs> but they're kind of working. Great job, Rahi. Those really looked like ice skates, but I have to admit, it didn't really look like you were skating along the carpet. More like sliding in style. You can see the difference in friction here, which is a force that happens when two surfaces rub against each other. When the two surfaces come into contact with each other, they begin to slow down from that point of contact as they rub together, even if they have a very low amount of friction and are very slippery. The difference between Rahi's skates on the carpet and real ice skates on ice is that ice has way less friction than a carpet. It's super slippery. So when anything is on ice, it usually wants to slip and slide. When water gets cold enough, it freezes into ice. And if ice gets warm enough, it melts back into water. But warmth isn't the only thing that makes ice melt. Ice melts just a little bit when you put weight on it. When you step on ice, your weight pushes down on the ice just under your feet, and the top layer turns back into water. That's why ice is slippery, because of that thin layer of water on top of the ice. If you step on ice with normal shoes, you'll slide a little bit, but if you put on ice skates, you can glide a lot farther. That's because you're standing on two thin blades. You still weigh the same amount, but this time, all your weight is on those blades instead of spread across your feet. This means that more ice melts right under your skates and you can slide farther. I've got this big chunk of ice so that we can do an experiment and understand a little more what's going on. Okay, first step is I'm gonna put this big chunk of ice up here. And now I'm gonna take this wire and secure it to my weight. Put this in the center. The wire is exerting pressure down onto the ice and cutting through it. Exactly like if you were wearing ice skates, skating along the ice, your weight would be exerting pressure onto the ice and making a groove as you pass along. And also, just like ice skating, as soon as you cut through the ice, it immediately reforms so that you're still skating on something solid. And you can see it right here. There's this line. Ice fuses back together and it creates this layer in between the two sides. So it's still one solid piece, but you can tell that something passed through this. This is a really different surface from what Rahi was working with. His skates used a material that has a low amount of friction and is quite slippery on carpet. However, the challenge is that the surfaces weren't low friction enough. He couldn't glide like the ice skaters do on ice. And the other challenge is momentum. Cynthia is taking on this next one. Let's see what she's up to. So I'm learning about angular momentum, which is crucial for being able to skate like a pro. Here's how it works. 
Angular momentum is a way to describe how things spin. Skaters use this rule to do amazing tricks. When they pull their arms in while spinning, they go faster and can do really cool spins. And when they want to slow down, they stretch their arms and legs out, which makes them spin slower. Want to try this at home? We'll get a spinning chair and something heavy and try spinning while holding your arms out and pulling them in. Feel how your spinning speed changes? That's angular momentum in action. Hopefully that didn't make you too dizzy. It was great to learn all about how ice skates work today. And although we didn't really make our own iceless ice skates, we learned why it's a lot harder to mimic ice skating on other surfaces and what makes ice skates perfect for gliding on ice. And if you want to learn more, you can check out more of our build challenges here and don't forget to subscribe for more fun content.